The first thing that we are going to do is create an expression statement. Write the following in your AST package. This is kind of confusing, right? Well, the reason we want an expression statement is because most scripting languages allow this type of loan statement. So our expression statement will just be a wrapper around an expression. Now let's get into Pratt parsing. Like I said previously, we are going to associate token types with particular parsing functions. Once we find these token types, we can parse them depending if they are in a prefix position or an infix position. Prefix coming before an expression and infix coming between two expressions. Let's define these two function types inside of our parser package. Obviously, we want both to return an expression. The infix functions will accept another expressions as an input, and this is going to be the left side of an expression. This will make sense if you think about an expression like this. Here we have two expressions to evaluate, a plus and a multiplication, and the left side of the multiplication is another expression. The next thing to add are two hash maps to our parser, one for the operators that can be prefix and another for the infix operators. These maps map a token type to a function. Now write two helper methods that will actually register tokens inside of these hash maps. Previously, we coded our ID nodes as expressions. These are the simplest expressions we are going to have, so we are going to write them first. First, expand the switch statement in our parse statement method. In the default case, we are going to call a method called parse expression statement. Parse expression statement will look like the following. First thing that we are going to do is use that expression statement that we just created, passing in our current token. Then we are going to call parse expression with a constant called none. The argument that we are passing into this parse expression function is the precedence for the expression, which we will need to actually define. In order to define the order of operations or precedence for our parser, we need to use the following integer constants. And while it doesn't matter what values we associate with these constants, the order does matter. This is the order of operations that our parser should follow. Function calls take the highest precedence and should be done first, while the equality operator should be done last, and none is just a marker for us to use. So now let's write the first iteration of parse expression. All this is trying to do is find a prefix function associated with the current token. If we don't have a prefix function for this token, we return null, which is what is going to happen currently, because we haven't added any tokens to our prefix map. If we do have a prefix function, then we will call it and return the result. Now let's actually add tokens to our prefix function map. Go to the constructor and add the following. Here we are associating the ID token with the parse identifier function. The parse identifier function should look like this. All we are doing is creating an identifier expression with our current token and the lexeme and returning it. Now, when our parser finds an ID token, it will use this function to parse it. So that takes care of our first expression. Now, let's write another one that is almost as easy to parse, which is integers. Add another structure to your AST package, and we will call this one integer literal. This follows the same pattern as usual, except for the value will be a 64-bit integer. Now return to the parser and write the parse integer literal method. This method should be easy to follow. All we are doing is creating the integer literal object. We are then attempting to parse the lexeme of our current token into an integer variable. If there's an error, we'll handle it if needed. Otherwise, we set the value of our object and then we return our object. Now we have the function. Now we need to register the token and this function in our prefix functions map. Do this inside of the constructor. The reason we are defining these integer literals and identifiers as prefix expressions is because the alternative infix expressions require two expressions, a left side and a right side, which wouldn't make much sense in this case. So now we have handled two expression types. Now let's go ahead and finish up our prefix expressions by handling the minus sign and the not operator. Add another structure to your AST package called prefix expression. We have written quite a few of these structures at this point, so I'm gonna be a little bit disheartened with myself if you can't map what is here to a prefix expression like minus five. Now, in order to get these to work, let's head back to our parser and write the parse prefix expression function. This function shouldn't be too hard to peruse either. All we are going to do is create our new prefix expression object, where our operator is going to be the lexeme of the current token, which is going to be a minus sign or an exclamation point. 
we then call get token to advance our parser forward. Then we make a call to parse expression, which will give us the expression used on the right side of our operator. We are going to call parse expression with a precedence of prefix, which still doesn't mean a whole lot to us at the moment, but will once we start parsing infix expressions. And following the pattern of the other expressions that we have written thus far, our last step is to register this method in the constructor. We associate the parse prefix expression with both the minus and exclamation token. So at this point, when we see a minus or an exclamation point, the parse expression is actually going to be called twice. Once in the default case of our parse statement expression and twice to get the expression on the right side of the operator. And that is going to be it for this video. If you go to the code in the repository, you will see that I have done some extra items. For each structure, I have added a two string method for debugging, and I've also included additional test methods. If you're interested, these should be easy to get through by yourself. In the next video, we're going to discuss infix expressions. See you there.